Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is just as vast and fantastical as it was in 2010. While not every aspect has aged gracefully, Monolith Soft's role-playing game has withstood the test of time and further cements itself as one of the most memorable JRPGs in the last decade. Although Xenoblade Chronicles opening hours may seem standard fare for JRPGs story-wise, what sets it apart right from the get-go is its setting. Years before the events of the game, two massive titans, Bionis and Makanis, were locked in a devastating battle of unfathomable proportions. One day the titans froze and life started to pop up on the backs of these enormous figures. To put things in perspective, Colony 9, where the protagonist Shulk lives, and the sprawling plains and lakes surrounding it are located near the Bionis' ankle. Big open areas alone are nothing new these days, but the way Monolith Soft plays with scale makes this world enticing. Massive beasts that tower over Shulk and his party roam the wilds, and huge natural formations loom over every region. All of this is accompanied by an enchanting soundtrack that has been stuck in my head for weeks. Definitive Edition has undergone an impressive graphical overhaul. The characters and textures have been redesigned to give the game a sharper and more defined look akin to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The real star of the show though is the updated UI. While Xenoblade still has some incredibly dense menus and stat pages, the new interface is much easier on the eyes and does a far better job of putting the most important information front and center. Combat plays out the same as it did in the original. You have a basic auto attack and a series of arts tied to cooldown meters. Much like an MMO, you'll need to chain arts, abilities, and unique talents, a specialized attack tied to a specific party member in order to take down enemies efficiently. Although the combat may not be as flashy as Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it certainly doesn't lack depth. Shulk is the main character, but you can play as any character in your party for most battles, and each character has their own strategy with different arts and talents to master. Combat rarely gets dull or tedious thanks to how differently all these characters play. As your party lands critical hits, a segmented gauge will fill up in the top left corner. You can use a third of the gauge to revive a fallen teammate, or if you fill it, you can unleash a chained attack. This will freeze the battle and each of your party members can use a single art. Matching the same color arts will inflict more damage, and with a bit of luck and high affinity for each other, your party can continue the chain attack for 15 turns, dealing a massive amount of damage. Meeting the requirements for lengthy chain attacks can take a while, but landing them properly and eviscerating a boss's health is incredibly satisfying. As good as combat is, it can be frustrating at times, mostly due to your companion AI. Because you can only control one character in any given battle, you rely heavily on party members to pull off specific combos. Just because I inflict a break art with Shulk does not guarantee Ryan will follow up with a topple art, halting my combo before it even gets started. Considering how many battles you take part in, these AI issues are rare, but that doesn't make them any less annoying. Although Xenoblade's combat demands a lot of you, Definitive Edition adds a few new difficulty options that can take the edge off for players who might be struggling, or alternatively, even the playing field for those who have mastered its mechanics. These difficulty options come in the form of casual mode and expert mode and can be adjusted at any point in your adventure. As you'd expect, casual mode makes battles significantly easier across the board. Even veteran players may find some use out of casual mode because it can cut down on the grinding thanks to quicker and easier battles. Expert mode, on the other hand, doesn't actually make the game harder, rather it lets you manually level up and level down your party members outside of battle. Every time you earn experience, a portion of that XP will be set aside. You can then use that experience pool to level up your characters further or de-level them on a whim. The inclusion of this mode may seem strange at first, but if you are the type of player who likes to complete every side quest, kill every unique monster, and min-max your characters, you will undoubtedly find yourself overleveled for a majority of the game. Expert mode is a smart way to combat that. Better yet, just like casual mode, you can turn expert mode on and off whenever you like. You can even enable casual mode and expert mode at the same time to further tune the difficulty. 
Despite the updated look and improved accessibility, a handful of the game's systems and mechanics feel like unnecessary bloat that add complexity simply for the sake of complexity. A prime example of this is the Affinity Chart system, which tracks Shulk's reputation with settlements and the relationships between various side characters. As you talk to named NPCs, they will register in your Affinity Chart, and if you complete quests for them, they may become linked to other NPCs. If you improve their relationship by trading with them and completing side quests, you can improve Shulk's overall renown in a specific settlement. On paper, the Affinity Chart sounds impressive, and to some extent it is. It was an ambitious idea in 2010, but the execution remains clunky and convoluted. The result is a dizzying chart that connects a bunch of forgettable characters to one another by completing dozens of repetitive fetch quests. Fortunately, Xenoblade Chronicles makes it clear early on that you can ignore the Affinity Chart altogether without any consequences. Thankfully, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition does away with the Affinity Chart in the excellent new 20-hour epilogue, Future Connected. Even though Shulk still plays a big role in the epilogue, the story is centered around Melia, a party member from the original game as she tries to figure out what happened to her hometown, Alchemuth. It's a bold move to shine the spotlight on Melia rather than Shulk, but it's one that ultimately pays off. Shulk's story has already been told, and given how Xenoblade Chronicles ends, there are a lot of loose ends to tie up with Melia's story and character. Without getting into spoilers and story specifics, Future Connected does an excellent job at exploring the repercussions and ramifications of Xenoblade Chronicles' final moments. Thanks to Future Connected's shorter length, there is little filler in the narrative. Right from the beginning, Monolith Soft carries you from region to region at a steady pace. Occasionally, you may stop to complete side quests and grind out a few levels depending on your difficulty settings, but by and large, there is a steady momentum pushing you through the epilogue. Future Connected also showcases some of Monolith Soft's best world, creature, and art design. Rather than a bunch of smaller maps divided by loading screens, Future Connected takes place on the Bionis shoulder, a massive lush area with stunning vistas and incredible architecture at every turn. While you will see some familiar creatures roaming the wild, there are a host of new and impressive beasts and bosses to take down, including an optional boss that will pose a significant threat to those who aren't adequately prepared. The only aspect of Future Connected that left me really disappointed is that many important characters from the original, like Ryan and Sharla, play little to no role in the epilogue. While this does make sense for the narrative, it does mean that throughout Future Connected, you'll only have access to a total of four party members, which leaves certain arts, abilities, and playstyles from the main game behind. Though Future Connected does lack some depth from the main game, it makes up for it with its focused narrative and gorgeous world design. More so than Xenoblade Chronicles proper, I felt compelled to explore every corner of the new area and complete every single side quest. While not every aspect of Xenoblade Chronicles has aged as well as others, Definitive Edition proves that Xenoblade Chronicles is still a fantastic JRPG with an immense amount of strategic depth that's still impressive in 2020. Its bevy of improvements and additions, as well as its fantastic epilogue, still make this an adventure worth embarking on a decade later.